See, I believe that this knowledge of David, of excuse me, of Joseph's heart was the knowledge that David said was too wonderful for us in Psalm 139. This is what Jesus meant when he said that the hairs on our head had been numbered. God knows us. He doesn't just know what will happen to us or what is going on with us. He knows our hearts and he is careful with us and he will always be kind to us. God knows right now the places where we are strong and where we are weak. He knows where we have failed and where we have overcome. He knows where we are willing and where we are hard-headed and hard hearted. God knows us. That's a truth that we can put our trust in. Nothing is hidden from God so we don't ever have to feel unseen, unwanted, or unknown. When we don't know what to do, remember this. God knows us. The angel spoke to Joseph and told him not to be afraid, but then he said, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Last point, God doesn't do new things in old ways. That's this beautiful yet painful part of God's will for our lives. When he says, I behold, I do a new thing, you better get ready to let go of the old things. And every time we look back with more longing than appreciation, we turn our hearts a little bit from that place of trusting that God is in control and what he's doing is good. See, Moses had to die before Joshua could take the lead. And Elijah's brook had to dry up before he would be sent to go save the widow and her son from hunger. Judah had to be taken captive in Babylon before they would repent and return to Jerusalem. And Mary had to become pregnant before she was married to Joseph for the Messiah to be born of a virgin by the power of the Holy Spirit. God doesn't do new things in old ways. That's why new things often make us afraid. They make us uncomfortable. They make us unsure. It's in those times that it is important to hold on to what we know for sure. And tonight, what do we know just from this passage of Scripture? We know that God hears us. And we know that God is with us. And we know that God knows us. This Christmas might be different for you. It might be different for a lot of us. But it's not different for, for God. It might not be the way we want it or the way we planned it, but it is exactly as God desires it. In a season of uncertainty, we can be certain of God. We can be certain of Christmas. Christmas reminds us that God has come to us. God is with us. God is for us. And God will save us. And so for these next few days, let's stop fighting for what we used to have or how we think things should be and let God give us something we've never had before. Let's stop complaining about what we want to be, about what we want, where we want to be, and bring glory to God right now where we are. Let's stop being afraid of this world and be confident in our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus. Let's stop weeping over what we have lost and choose, because again, joy is always a choice. Choose to rejoice over what we have been given. At the close of Matthew 1, it says, All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Christmas is not when God came to us. Forgive me, because we've all heard it, we've all said it, we're all waiting for it. Christmas is when God showed us that he's always been here. The birth of Christ is when the invisible God became visible. It's when the word that always existed put on our flesh. It's when we finally could see and touch and hear the God who had always been present and moving and speaking. And once he made it clear that he was with us, he promised us in Matthew 28, verse 20, the first thing we're told about him is he is with us, and the last thing he said before he ascended was this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He didn't come and go. He was always here. He showed us his presence and promised that it would never leave us. There is so much that we don't know. We don't know when COVID-19 will be behind us. We don't know when quarantines will end. We don't know the percentage of the vaccine's effectiveness. We don't know when we will be able to meet to worship together the way we want to, sitting next to each other, laying hands on each other, and taking our masks off. But what we do know is greater than what we don't know. And what we don't know does not need to be known if we are confident in the truth that's been spoken to us and over us. Even more, the spirit who lives within us. We know that God hears us, and we know that God is always with us. We know that God knows our hearts. We know that when the pillars of the earth shake, that it is God who holds them in place. We know that Jesus holds all things together, so we are never going to fall apart. 
this Christmas. Let's not look at what's going on around us, but let's look clearly at the one who has come to save us. No matter what we don't know, we can be sure of this. Jesus is here. Rejoice in your uncertainty because we are certain of this one truth. Jesus is here.